Welcome! This tutorial video will cover the Javelin team in Steel Beasts. We will demonstrate the operation of the Javelin missile team against different targets. The FGM-148 Javelin is a fire and forget missile, meaning no further guidance is needed once the missile locks onto and then is fired at a target. The effective range of the Javelin in Steel Beasts is a minimum of 150 meters to a maximum of just under 2500 meters depending on the altitude difference between the team and the target. The Javelin has two attack profiles, a dive from high altitude, attacking the weaker parts of the armor, and from a shallow dive, known as direct, in case the top attack flight profile is unsuitable. Javelin utilizes a tandem heat warhead to defeat advanced armor technology. It is a portable weapon and lighter than guided missile platforms with a separate launcher to carry. Press F8 if you would like to see the external observer's position view of your Javelin team. This is also the default view if you double click the unit icon in the map screen. Press F7 to move into the squad leader's position. By default, you are looking over the viewfinder of the missile's launcher. Then press F2 to access the missile's viewfinder. Day mode, shown here, can only be used for observation and not for acquiring a target or launching the missile. At the bottom of the field of view in day mode is the day field of view stadia, a tool used while in day mode to estimate the range of armored vehicles based on their size in the stadia. This makes it quite simple to scan the battlefield for targets that are within range and verify they are within the approximately 2,000 meter minimum. At 2,000 meters away, a T-72 sized tank fits just inside, or is touching, the bottommost level of the stadia when facing the javelin team head on or in front view. At 2,000 meters away in profile, a T-72 sized tank fits just inside or is touching the top level of the stadia. From this, we know the target is just at the edge of the maximum range of the javelin and is still very likely to be hit if we launch. You can use the numeric keypad plus key to toggle between day and thermal imaging modes. In this view, objects are shown as white hot meaning that hot objects, like tanks, are lighter colored, with the warmest objects showing up as white. Note that the day field of view stadia are still present in this view and are available to assist with estimating range. Pressing the N key toggles three different levels of zoom, from wide field of view, to be FOV, to narrow field of view, and FOV, to seek. The final level of zoom, SEEK, provides targeting crosshairs and reticule markings, called track gates, that show if the missile's targeting system has acquired the target. To enable this last mode, you must first hit the control key, which activates the BCU unit. The BCU unit has a one-time, four-minute lifespan that limits the amount of time a missile can be used after activating the BCU. As the BCU cools the missile seeker, a yellow indicator light will turn on. This yellow light will remain on for about 10 seconds until the unit is ready to fire, at which point the light will turn back off. When the BCU yellow indicator light disappears, the missile is ready to acquire targets. Once this happens, you can enter seek mode by pushing the end key until your view has crosshairs and is zoomed onto the target. Additionally, if you were already in narrow view mode and have a target in the middle of the targeting area, the viewfinder might automatically switch to seeker view once the BCU is ready. At this point, you are ready to begin the final firing sequence for the javelin. If you wait too long, around three to four minutes, the BCU will no longer be able to cool the seeker to acquire the target and will need to be reloaded. When the BCU is almost expired, after about three and a half minutes, there will be a blinking red indicator light displaying BCU in the lower left-hand corner of the viewfinder. You still have about 30 seconds to fire at this point. Once the power does run out after about 4 minutes, the BCU indicator will become solid red and you will see a message stating that the missile system is reloading. This means it is preparing another BCU, at which point you need to start the whole cooldown process all over again. The seek mode provides targeting crosshairs and track gates that show if the missile's targeting system has acquired the target, 
which occurs when you hit the control key to initiate target acquisition. You must hold down the control key to keep a target locked for firing. One important note is that the crosshairs are crucial for target selection in the case of vehicles that are close together to assist in determining which target you are engaging. The reticule track gates will flash if the missile is not successfully locked and ready to fire while holding down control. When you have a target successfully locked, the track gates around the target will hold steady with the crosshairs crossed over the specific target you will be engaging. As you can see here, the crosshair location and steady state of the reticule stadia indicate the front tank will be engaged by the javelin missile. To fire the missile, continue to hold control and hit the spacebar. Once the missile fires, you can either reload or immediately relocate if you think your team has been spotted firing and might be in danger of retaliatory fire from the target. The missile will be unaffected because it is a fire and forget munition. After several seconds, the missile will impact the target according to the attack program you selected, in this case, from the top. In a top attack program, the missile takes advantage of the very thin and weak armor protection at the top of any armored vehicle. The missile flies out and over the target, and then down into the top of it. Sometimes you may find that a target has overhead cover or other obstacles that might prevent a top attack from being successful. To switch attack types of the javelin, while in seek mode, press the page up key, universal to any change of few settings in Steel Beasts, to change the attack indicator from top to DIR, which means direct and attack from the side. Note that this is more likely to hit the thicker armor in the front or flanks of the target, and thus has a lower chance of destroying or disabling the target. There is also a higher chance in direct mode that the javelin might be intercepted by an active protection system. You can only toggle to direct attack profile while in seek mode, while there is an active BCU unit that has cooled down the missile seeker. The missile's effects are quite destructive. Depending on the attack profile used, the armor levels in the tank, and the way the warhead impacted, the tank will be either destroyed, disabled, or damaged. The Javelin has a tandem heat warhead meant to defeat even advanced armor types. Because of this, it does extensive damage to armored vehicles, depending on where it hits. For instance, because of the thin armor on the tops of virtually all armored vehicles, a top attack is almost always fatal. But not always. Sometimes a tank may survive with damage, either because of the construction, advanced armor, or just luck, as in the case of this T-14 Armada. In this case, the AAR view shows that this vehicle still lost both communications and was immobilized due to the effects of impact, greatly reducing its effectiveness in a battle. A flank attack in direct mode is also often fatal because of the thinner side armor, such as what happened to this T-80, which was destroyed by a side impact by the Javelin. Even the frontal armor of a T-90 proved no match for the tandem heat warhead of the Javelin. Sometimes a vehicle, such as the T-14 Armada, or an older tank with a systems upgrade, have some new defenses that might defeat the Javelin's attack. In this example, the Armada's Afghanit Active Protection System intercepted the Javelin and was able to degrade its impact. As a result, the target was able to survive this particular attack with no catastrophic or disabling damage. This is a good reason to consider your target when making the attack to pick the right attack profile for the situation. Similar to many other units in Steel Beast Professional, you have a binocular view available for additional observation and scouting. In the external observer position, accessed by pressing F8, pressing the N key will provide a magnified view past your unit without any visible markings. To assign the Javelin team in the mission editor, Right-click on the map, then select New Unit, Infantry, Missile Team. Scale the unit size and quantity as desired. Once placed, go to Options, Optional Weapon, and make sure FGM-148 Javelin is checked. Because the Javelin is a fire-and-forget weapon, it offers a somewhat higher rate of fire than with a missile that requires the operator to guide it to the target. The Javelin being fire-and-forget also allows the operator to retreat to a safer location while the missile is still in flight allowing a higher degree of survivability for the engaging team. This makes it one of the most powerful and versatile anti-tank guided missiles in Steel Beast Professional. The Javelin is a formidable weapon when employed effectively. 
If you find yourself on the receiving end of the Javelin missile as someone leading the red team or opposition force in a simulated battle, there are some tactics you can use to help counter the Javelin on the battlefield. Use infantry more to locate missile team locations ahead of the armored forces you command. Once located, you can then use direct assault by infantry to take out the team without risking more valuable assets. Or use indirect fire from mortars or artillery to hit a suspected area where a javelin team might be. Use vehicles with active protection systems in the first line of assault. This will allow you to survive the first salvo and potentially identify and neutralize the javelin launch team before they engage more vulnerable targets. Keep vehicles in cover when possible, such as behind buildings, masking terrain features, forests, or under bridges. If you have multispectral smoke screens, you can blind the thermal sensor on the javelin and prevent the team from locking the missile onto your forces. Keep a 2,000 meter distance and use HE frag rounds to suppress or destroy missile teams with direct fire. Use mass forces. Missile teams have a low volume of fire, so you may preserve most of your force if you can identify and suppress the missile team locations quickly, at least while your forces sprint from cover to cover. We hope you found this video helpful. Please let us know in the user forum at steelbees.com. Thank you.